Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. All right. Hi, everyone. It's Ted Thomas, and welcome to Wealth Without Risk. I always call this Imagine Wealth Without Risk. And I, I have a guest today. His name is Mitch Steffen. And then let me spell that because people put too many letters in it. So it's Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. And he's going to do it a few times while we talk. Now, listen, you've been on my podcast before. This guy's written three books. And the title to his book is My Life and a Thousand Houses. Okay. So the houses has an S on it, but his name doesn't. But anyway, I want to talk to Mitch today uh, for the next 20 or 30 minutes about the one book that I thought I really enjoyed. Now, keep in mind, I've been a professional real estate for a long time, so I love this book, but you need all of these books. So let me tell you about this book. It's a a book called The Art of Owner Financing. And the big trouble we have with all you tax lien certificate buyers and tax deed buyers is you get a property for a great deal, and then you don't know what to do with it. Here's a guy that knows what to do with it, and he just buys those tacky properties all over Texas and gets great deals on them, and he turns them around. So his book is really worthwhile. Mitch, you on there? Can you hear me okay? I'm doing great, Ted. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Okay, glad you're here. Now, listen, I have your book right in front of me, and the title, again, is The Art of Owner Financing. So give me a quick one-minute or two-minute version of what this owner financing really is. It's just a way to sell your houses. I do something that might be considered unique across the nation. I don't know a lot of people that do it. Uh, I, I buy houses with OPM or other people's money, and then I sell them for a, a larger markup, and I carry the payments for 30 years fixed. There's no balloon, and there's no and there's no time frame for people to refinance. I don't want them to refinance. I want them to pay me 30 years worth of payments because as a 30-year mortgage, a person ends up paying two and a half times, almost three times what the sales price was. Yeah, the banks figured that out a long time ago. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just the nature of uh, it's just the nature of a thirty-year mortgage. Absolutely. So I buy a house. I'll buy a house for fifty thousand dollars. I'll borrow the fifty thousand at say eight percent interest only from a private lender, and then my payment will be about three fifty a month. And the great thing is I can fix it or not fix it because you can owner finance or seller finance a house to a person with a hole in the roof, just the same as you can sell it with a brand new roof. You can own it. You're the guy giving the loan. You can underwrite the loan. You know, there is no inspection on what the condition of the house is because you are the lender. And so if I want to, my, my favorite strategy of all time is buy it. Don't fix it. Owner finance it for double and watch the guy fixing up your house and making payments to you go over budget, driving the price of your collateral up. I love it. So basically, you're a renegade. You don't believe in going to the banks to get the money. You get private money. And then what you do is you buy these houses, and you don't go back to the bank to get them financed. It. You end up as a bank. Is that pretty close? That's why I don't need a – that's why I boom in a recession. I don't need a bank to buy houses, and the people that buy my houses don't – Okay. Okay, great. You're going in and out of a cell area, I can tell, so you, you cut in and out there. So repeat that last part again, if you would. What I was saying was I boom in, a, in the recession because I don't need a bank to buy the houses because I use private money. And then my buyers okay. don't need a bank to buy my house because I give them a loan myself. So in the recession, when the banks are closed, I'm still wide open for business. It and does. most people don't have a place to go. Okay, you're absolutely right. So give me a a little insight, because I want the listener to get the insight of what you're going to answer this question. And the question I'm going to ask you is this. The the challenge is these guys want to sell houses, and they really think they know how because they they do what the realtors do, do. And you don't do what real estate people do. Not that you dislike real estate people. You're just a renegade guy that figured out how the system really works and how to make money. And so when you want to sell these houses, what do you do as far as signage? What do you do as far as putting it in the newspaper? What do you do as far as your website? Give us a little insight into that because you have an ability to sell a property. And I think that's the biggest trouble in real estate for the entrepreneur. They all know how to do fix up and all that stuff that they're wasting their time. They need to learn how to sell. So tell them how to sell a property. You're right about being a renegade. I don't mean to be a renegade. It's just that I A-B test all the time. And I figured out that 
especially in the seller financing, when you're when you're trying to sell or finance a house, most realtors don't understand the concept. They right. still want you to have appraisals and inspections and all this stuff. They, they they think it's their job most of the time to ruin the deal. We don't. I don't even use signs. I don't even put a sign in the front yard of the house I want to sell. I don't run ads. All I do is go to Facebook. I, I set up a Facebook business page, and I started a community there of people that were interested in seller finance homes. And I have eight. I have eleven thousand. And 11,003, last time I looked, people in that community in San Antonio that want to buy one of my owner-financed houses in San Antonio. I average yeah, nine. But wait a minute, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mitch. Wait, you got 30 years in the business. I got brand new clients here. What does a brand new client do? He puts a sign out, and what else does he do? I don't put a sign out. I started a Facebook business page. I want you to tell me about... The little guy you write in the book, what do you want him to do? For that guy, I would suggest that you put 20 signs around the neighborhood with a phone number on the sign. All right. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. That, okay. That, that's the that kind of stuff. That, yeah. That's the kind of stuff a little guy that's just getting started can do. So to talk to me on that level because that's who my people are. My people aren't sophisticated. You're, you're 30 years in the business. You've done 1,000 houses. I mean, there's probably five guys in the whole United States have done what you've done. That's why I got you on the phone. Now tell me how to make the little guy successful. When I was a little guy, I, if I was a little guy right now, I, I would go to livecom.com, L-I-V-E-C-O-M-M.com, and I would buy me a, a phone number for $2 that has a text distribution list attached to it. And whenever someone calls that phone number from their cell phone, I capture their cell phone number in that text distribution list. So it could be in the middle of the night, and hundreds of people could be calling in, to hear the free recording or to learn more about that house, and I'm capturing their phone numbers one after another, bam. And then in, in the morning I wake up, and I, I have 100 or 200 people that called my signs because I put 20 signs around the neighborhood. I put one in the front yard, and if I'm really busy, like I have a full-time job and I'm just doing this part-time, then I would buy two Livecom phone numbers, and one of them – would be forwarded to the recording about the house, which tells them everything about the house so that you don't have to answer the phone and tell them. When they call the number in the front yard or around the neighborhood, they get a recording of everything there is to know about that house, from the year it was built to the school districts to the how much life is left on the roof, gas hot water heater, gas stove, whatever it is. It, I, it's, about a, it's a list about as long as your arm. And then good, good. If, if they're interested... I, I, I use the second number, and I tell them, if you think this is the house for you, drive to the house, check out the front yard, check out the backyard, look through the windows, check out the neighborhood, and if you still think this is the house for you, call the red number in the back window. And so I have the second numbers placed in the back window, and that goes directly to me or my salesperson. So that eliminates all the time and the re repetition and the tire kickers. You only get calls from people that were serious, but you still have the phone terrific, numbers terrific. of everyone who called you. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, now what did you do on the signs around the neighborhood, and what did you say on them, and what does the, the one that's in front of the house say? Okay, when they all say the same thing, even the one in front of the house. They all say, okay. home for sale. Owner will finance, and then three bedroom, two bath, and the phone number. And so you're letting – you're, you're putting put signs out. All in Spanish. Okay, okay. Our right, yours are in Spanish, okay, because you've got a, a big Spanish uh, audience there in San Antonio. But all my other guys, they can put up English signs and Spanish if they want, right? That's right. I, I started out putting out English signs, and I sold my houses, but I just learned that there was a huge need for seller financing in the Hispanic market. So I became Thank you. the gringo right. of the Hispanos. <laughs> gringo. Okay, good. All right. All right. So let me ask you a couple other questions. So you put your sign out. So that's old traditional stuff that, that uh, people should be doing. Not difficult. Doesn't cost a lot. And then you let technology do the rest of the work for you. So you're doing all the qualifying with that question and answer thing on the phone. And so, okay, I get that. All right. So now, how long does it take um, before the, the phone is ringing? It starts ringing 
almost the minute you get out your signs because if you're putting your signs in strategic places where I always like to put my signs where people have to stop, like at stop signs. I don't like to put them on major thoroughfares with really busy four-way intersections like in the, because I, I'm trying to avoid the sign police. So I just put yeah. it in the neighborhood, in, a, in, in places where people have to stop. I love to put them at car washes, auto parts places, um, where people are parked, where they have time to write down the number. And in Spanish, we say casas dueño a dueño, which is homes owner to owner. And you have to learn what, how people say things in your region. Some people might, be, might not even know what an a owner-financed house is or a seller-financed house is but they know what rent to own is. And, and, okay. and then you can explain to them that they're not renting at all when they call you, but they but rent to own might reach more people in certain areas. Okay, this is all genius stuff. This is really genius. So you stay out of the out of the regular market. That's why I call you a renegade in a very positive and affectionate way because you're not screwing around waiting for those blue suit guys at the bank to give you money because you get it from your private investors. And then when you want to sell it, you sell it with your own financing so you don't you just eliminated the banks and you eliminated a lot of, I suppose if an agent comes to you, you'll pay them. Is that right? Oh yeah. But I, I make them bring an extra 3% on top of the down payment I already wanted. So if I want a 10% down payment, I make them, I make a realtor bring me a 13% down payment because they need to earn their money. My houses, okay, are easy to sell. My houses are easy to sell. I averaged nine days on the market in the last 350 houses. Wow, that's okay, amazing. So, uh, nine days in a row. Okay, but remember, you're the 30-year-old pro, and you've made every mistake in the world. Matter of fact, you probably write a book about the mistakes that you made. That would be another bestseller. But but right now, I'm <laughs> interested in – I get people that uh, learn how to do tax lien certificates and tax deeds, and they don't know what to do at the house, and they get it. Everybody tells them – there's every seminar, every weekend, whether it's in San Antonio or Dallas or, or Kansas City, I tell them how to do fixer-uppers. And these guys go broke doing fixer-uppers. And what happens is they don't know how to sell stuff. What you know how to do is you're a marketeer. You're, you're, you're really good at marketing. And i got to be careful not to overwhelm my student. Now, the smart ones will figure it out. But the average person would never dream of just putting a bunch of signs and running everybody to a Facebook page. So that's really unique. I love that. Give that website well, you know so people can go and look. It's 1,000 how Livecom.com is where I buy my phone numbers that capture the incoming caller. You can watch a video on that homepage. It'll show you exactly what I do in cartoon Good. characters. Livecom, L-I-V-E-C-O-M.com. It's live communications. Don't leave out the second M there in com. It's Livecom. Also, I want to tell you something else. You talk about Renegade. Here's a couple of Renegade tricks. One is when I had some really hard-to-move houses i was struggling with them i'd made some mistakes by accident i went to the auction and i saw people paying too much there and i went and talked to them and found out they were real dumbasses and they were just paying <laughs> way too much and so yeah. i said right now get those two houses i'm struggling with i want to foreclose on myself so i put them in a land trust so there wouldn't be a foreclosure shown in mitch stevens name so i put a i put them in a land trust and then I went to foreclose on the trust, which meant I didn't even have to wait any of the times because the only person that could protest the foreclosure that was done, if it was done wrong, would be me. And I'm foreclosing yeah. on myself. So I just, the next foreclosure date, I just showed up with a trustee. I auctioned off my own houses, got paid in three days, and made $10,000 uh, off of one and $7,000 off the other on a house I couldn't sell to save my life. So, there you go. Uh, so that, there's, there's what experience in real estate will do for you. So um, the average guy would have just lost his uh, assets, and, and you didn't lose your asset because you know that. All right, I want to take you back to your book, which is titled The Art of Owner Financing. And would you tell people how to get that book again? You can get it at 1000houses.com, and everything that comes from 1000houses.com is autographed. I have to chuckle because for the life of me, I don't know why anybody wants my autograph. But apparently a lot of people did, so I said I will make sure that happens. That's 1000houses.com, and there's a ton of free stuff there. Just click under the free stuff tab. I actually have a, an hour and 10-minute webinar on exactly how I'm seller financing houses, and there's all kinds of stuff there. Okay, good. All right, slowly take a couple of minutes and walk me through your process, how you buy it, how you get it financed, and then how you sell it, 
and how you sell the financing. I buy it by by using a formula that I back into the rent. I already know the people in this neighborhood that are living in these houses can afford the rent or else they wouldn't be living there. I take the rent number and I, I, I run it through a formula and I arrive at an owner finance value or an OFV. If it, I haven't invented much in my life, but I invented the OFV. There's the ARV and the Mayo. So I find out the <laughs> owner finance value and then I know what to offer for the house. I shoot for 50%, but I don't always make it. But I average around 65% is what I pay for houses of what I can Okay. Uh, 65% of what I can sell or finance them for. Okay. If you want the formula? So you have an immediate profit on sale is 35%. Is that right? Minimum. Minimum. Okay, good. All right. Now, how do you, now you, you bought it. Are, are there plenty of these to buy? You wouldn't think so, but I'll buy a hundred a year for the last 22 years. Oh, Jesus. Okay, good. All right. How do you sell them? Just the way we talked about it. I put signs to start out. I put signs all around the town. I live in San Antonio, 2 million people more or less. I oh. put signs all around the town that says, free list of owner financed homes, free list of seller financed homes. Casas Dueño a Dueño in a phone number. I put a hundred signs out a month for six months all around town. And I started collecting all the incoming callers cell phone numbers till I had 11,003 phone numbers. And then I, at the same time, I opened up a Facebook business page. And when people call one of those 600 signs around town over the last six months, plus there's signs in all my houses I have for sale, all of those numbers end up in the same place. Because in LiveCom, you can text one single phone number or you can text all the phone numbers you have at one time. So I'm texting all of these phone numbers at some point saying, please go to my Facebook business page dot com forward slash Mitch's houses or whatever and like my page so that you can get instantly notified when I have a new home. That's what my recording says on all those signs. So those signs are capturing the phone number, but the message is saying, go to my Facebook business page so you can see what's going on and I can help get you a house. And everyone goes there. And there's 11,000 people that want a seller finance home, and we're posting pictures and the prices, and my sales guy is constantly adding material because it's not just a sales site. It's a community. People are asking questions. They want to know things, and we're trying to help them get answers. And other people in the community are answering their questions. They're talking about other investors in town that are no good, and, and other people are confirming that don't buy from those people. Now, we stay out of the arguments, but we don't avoid conflict. Some people have told us, the price on your house is way too high. Only an idiot would buy that house. We have canned responses that our salesmen use that say things like, we understand that the house needs a lot of work and that it may not be for you, but please don't wreck the dream of a person that knows how to fix this house and wants it. Good idea. And then we start Good getting apologies. That's basically a Facebook business page is free. Signs are a dollar apiece plus maybe a little labor to write on them, but I always did my signs sitting in front of the TV at night eating a meal. After I finish, I just watch my whatever I'm going to watch, and I fill out 100 signs. They don't. It doesn't take very long to, to, to write them. Really? Uh, really? Oh, that's great. That's, uh, good. that's good. Yeah, yeah. If you're no. watching the football game or something, you can do 500 signs. Wow. Okay. What's the average profit on the house when you, uh, when you buy it and then resell it? So you've done, uh, what did you say, 200 in the past uh, two years? Yeah, I've done 2,000 since 1996 in my hometown, over 2,000. I don't buy anywhere but San Antonio and or surrounding counties. Like, I don't want to be too far away. Now, what level of – I'm sorry. What level of price can you sell these rent-to-owns? Can you do a three or $400,000 house? You can, but it works best in houses that have a sales price of 160 or less. If you sell a $300,000 house – if you sell a $300,000 house owner finance, 
you might need to ask for a sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred thousand dollar down payment. Then it might work. Wow, that's a big but, down payment. But, but, to add that much, they yeah, don't but, need to be owner financed. Yeah. No, that's not true. That's not true. There's a million reasons. I just did help the person in California owner finance an eight hundred thousand dollar house, and someone put two hundred and fifty thousand down. They're a Mexican national. They had more money than God. They didn't want to deal with a freaking American bank, and they just had. They just wanted to put some money down and buy his daughter a house that he wasn't responsible for the payments for, for her wedding. People say, who's got, who's got $250,000 in, in Los Angeles, California, to put down on a house? Let me tell you, yeah. I'm not look, there's 10 million people there. I'm just looking for one that, that it's the right house <laughs> in the right situation. Good. I'm looking for good. one you, out of 10 million people. you got a people. good attitude. you got a good attitude, really. Bad. It went to 150. <laughs> That's great. That's terrific. Most people want the name of your book, is, and then uh, I'll let you go to work. No, you drive it anyway. Yeah, the name of my the name of this series is My Life in a Thousand Houses. If you want to read that story of all my failures, read the first one, My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing Forward to Financial Freedom, where I talk about constantly having to morph to avoid bad things that were happening to me and constantly having to morph to make the good things that happened to me happen more often. So it was a constant state of flux, and it still is to this day. Nothing stays the same. I am constantly morphing. It wasn't maybe eight months ago I learned how to use Facebook business page. I morphed yep. again the way that I sell houses. So it's always right. about change <clears throat> and staying in front of people like Ted and on these kinds of conversations to learn what's working in other parts of the country. All right. Thank you. Let me ask you one last question and take a couple of minutes if you like, and then we'll be finished for today. But there's a myth out there that people are going to buy houses and they're going to rent them and they're going to retire with rental properties. You break that myth in one of your first chapters of your book. Can you just give us a couple of minutes on people that are thinking they're going to buy these houses and rent them for the rest of their life and end up with a nice retirement? Okay, so the first thing that happens when you go to a buy and hold seminar or, or a rental unit seminar or a, a be the great landlord seminar is they say, okay, so you, you're, you're going to be able to collect uh, $1,500 a month on this house, but your payment's only 1000 So you're going to make five, 500 a month, which is 6000 6, a year on this house, right? To which I immediately jump up and say bullshit because you just disqualified – Everything that can go wrong from the back fence to the front mailbox. And there's no way you might get lucky for one year. You might get lucky for two years. But if you do, it'll be pure luck. They're not accounting for anything in the middle. And one bad tenant can take your whole year. Now, if you're trying to make a living or trying to get rich doing rental properties, you're probably going to find out within a year or two that you're lucky if you just break even and the house holds on to itself, not, not leaving any money left over for you to take your wife to dinner. You're lucky if the house just pays for itself and everything it needs and all the changes that happen. So, but when you buy a house and you sell or finance it, when you collect $1,500 and you have a $1,000 payment and you're the bank, you're not responsible for anything except collecting the payment. And so that $500 is yours. And here's another big one. <clears throat> Sometimes people, I just had it happen last week. Sometimes people give me fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 down on a $100,000 house because they want either a short term or they want a low payment or they don't want the equity from their previous sale of their previous house to vanish into thin air over, over things that aren't important. So they just immediately throw it into the next house. Try picking up a $30,000 non-refundable rent deposit. Just try it one day on a house yep. of a $100,000 value. It ain't going to happen. Never going to happen. Here's the magic of my business. If I do eight houses, if I do one house this month and I collect 10000 down and I create 500 a month positive cash flow, I don't need to use my cash flow to live. I just collected 10000 down. How many people could live off of 10000 a month? How many people yeah. could live three months off of 10000 There's a big right. difference. I, I, I want to take all the time that a person spends on 
property management and finding a new tenant and making a new make ready for the house for the new tenant. I take all that time and I just go find another house to sell or finance exactly. for 10000 exactly. Yep, yep. Hi, everyone. Once again, this is Ted, and I'm going to close the call out right now. But uh, I've been speaking with Mitch Steffen. Now, remember, it's Mitch Steffen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, no S in the end of it. So you can research him. He's got a website he's going to tell you about in a second. And, uh, Mitch, you've just been terrific. I'd love to have you on these calls. And uh, you have a, 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 an encyclopedia brain full of real estate knowledge that people need to know. I call you the renegade investor because you don't go to the bank and you, to borrow money, and you don't go to the bank to get money to finance, you know how to do this whole thing. And that's what people need to learn how to do. So I'm really impressed with everything you do. So give them quickly your website, and then we'll have to say sayonara for today. But I really appreciate you being on the call. You always do a great job. So give them a website, if you will. So go to my website, 1000houses.com. That's 1000houses.com. Or check out my podcast, reinvestorsummit.com. And there I have 350 archived interviews. So there you go, Ted. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll talk to you again soon. Good luck. Have a good week and great holidays, okay? Thank you for joining us today. Go to tedthomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episode to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.